Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Thursday the 13th of February 2020 and we're providing our silver price forecast for this year and the reasons behind our projections. Now last Sunday we produced our gold price forecast and we provide links to it in the description box below. Now on the 29th of August 2019 we published our revised gold and silver 2019 price forecast where we predicted for varying reasons, some of which we shall address a little later, that silver could peak at somewhere between $19.50 and $21 but would fall back again by the end of the year to between $18 and $19. Now this was at the time of many issues causing considerable concern and most of our competitors were virtually guaranteeing silver prices to be at the very least $23 and others stating that they were going to be close to silver's all-time high of $50. So we were by far one of the most conservative, if not bearish, of the channels predicting gold and silver prices and even we were a little too optimistic. As silver actually peaked on the 4th of September 2019 at 1930, 20 cents lower than the bottom of our predicted peak. And even though it did actually hit 1812 on the 31st of December 2019, it closed the day closer to 1787, 13 cents lower than the bottom of our closing prediction. Though, to be fair, we are quite content being out by a few cents rather than the tens of dollars that a number of our contemporaries were. But as the saying goes, that's now history. What excites and interests most people within the precious metal space is what is going to happen to silver prices in 2020 and is there for the purpose of this video podcast today. Now, on Tuesday the 27th of August of last year, we published a video where we put what we regarded then as an extreme potential case for gold and silver prices. Not where we actually expected prices to go, but where they could have gone if a list of issues we had drawn up had all come about. Now that video was entitled $1,800 gold and $2,250, as $22.50 silver in 2019, is this possible? Now in that video we pointed out that there were outlying potentials for both gold and silver to reach these levels and some of the reasons we quoted were we have the bond market sending a signal that the US and many Western countries were moving towards a recession so the inverted yield curve announced was a strong indicator of that happening. There was strong demand by emerging markets and especially the central banks Brexit uncertainties in the United Kingdom and its impact on Europe led to the demise of Theresa May and the surgence of Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. There were Italian political and economic difficulties, major issues with Iran and of course the China-US trade war, potential trade war with Europe and the United States, the Fed changing course reducing interest rates and portfolio managers readdressing their strategic asset allocations and a number moving in favour of gold, which ultimately benefits silver prices too. And mixed financial results at that stage from major companies and the volatility of stock markets. And of course, the unpredictability of what President Trump might tweet. And for those who can remember, Around that time, he was criticising a number of major companies and their CEOs or owners, Amazon being one. Now, that video was basically created to highlight what could potentially happen given a set of circumstances, all basically occurring at once and proving detrimental to the underlying economy. But even then, our figures were not the ridiculous ones that the pumpers were putting out. But not all of these things happened and the impact from them to a large degree was relatively mute. 
which is why, although gold strengthened during the year and performed well, up some 19%, silver also performed well, depending on which date one measured it, from between 155 to 16%. But neither reached anywhere near to the level the pumpers were advocating, nor to the extreme level we stated was an outreach possibility, but extremely unlikely. So, what broadly has happened since then to change the economic and geopolitical landscape? Well, the recession which the inverted yield curve suggested now doesn't actually appear as if it's going to happen. Brexit is almost sorted, though of course it won't be absolutely finalised until the 31st of December. Iran has quietened down, but not gone away, and today Congress has attempted to pass legislation limiting the President's power in this arena, as they are fearful that President Trump might act in unison and become too aggressive. The Fed has signalled zero rate cuts this year, though we actually estimate that they will be one. And the Fed Chair's comments to Congress were slightly dovish, though he emphasised that he couldn't really see interest rates actually moving from today's position. Though he also said that they were hoping for 2% inflation. And with inflation being, at this moment, a fair stretch from that um, one has to ask what does he need to do in order to gain that two percent that he holds in such esteem and the reducing interest rates is one of them of course you still have us and eu tariffs as a possibility although there does certainly appear to be some movement towards a us eu trade deal Central banks and some emerging markets are still buying gold, but silver, unfortunately, is not on their radar to any significant, if any, extent whatsoever. And stock markets have reached numerous all-time highs yet again and are not that far off from them even again today. Taking all of this into account, it would not then be regarded as outrageous to suggest that silver, like gold, will move within a similar band over the next year as it did in 2019, though we suspect at a very slightly higher level. However, there are a number of factors that can affect this. One, the coronavirus poses a significant and substantial risk to global trade and free movement of peoples unless the virus is contained, isolated and then eventually cured as soon as possible. There are, as of yesterday, nearly 53,000 people that have been infected, and I'm told unofficially today that's risen to 60,000, and over 1,370 deaths. Two, the Fed is embarked on substantial liquidity support into the repo market, which has been extended yet again, and as yet no one, not even the Fed, knows what the ultimate magnitude of this support will be and the effect it will have on the balance sheet. Three, Europe is teetering on the brink of recession and China will be adversely affected by the coronavirus for some time to come. We also do not know what sort of a trade deal the UK and US can come to terms with. And especially as there appears to be a dispute between the two over the Huawei for its 5G broadband implementation. None of this serves well for increasing trade and global demand. We've also reported, this is number four earlier this week, that the euro has sunk against the US dollar to its lowest level for four years. And the dollar index, as of today, stands at an incredible 99.07, something we predicted over 12 months ago. If you bear in mind some interviews we carried out, when the pumpers all stated that the dollar was on the verge of collapse. And five, Companies are reporting that trade is being affected by the coronavirus in that, particularly in China, restaurants are either closed or little used and many people have been home from work, affecting both manufacturing and production services. Now, in addition to all of this, we also have to factor in 
the presidential election in November and the turmoil this could cause certainly before the election takes place and whether there is a strong likelihood or not that Donald Trump will receive a second term. Which, to be fair, following the impeachment trial acquittal and the signing of a number of trade contracts, it looks, at least for now, that he is likely to be re-elected. Now, there are many experts out there calling for significantly higher gold prices in 2020 and then highlighting the fact that silver normally outperforms gold and will do so this time because of its relatively historic high, though not its absolute peak, of a 90 to 1 gold to silver ratio. Now they quote the reason for this rise in price being a fragile global economy. The stock market bubble has to burst. It's not sustainable. Further interest rate cuts will be necessary, um, especially as the ECB is now likely to reduce rates very soon. Gold is trading at a discount, looking at the traditional Dow gold ratio, and silver is trading at an incredible discount to gold, the 90 to 1 gold to silver ratio. And geopolitical turmoil will continue with Iran. It's quiet for the moment, but further retaliation of some sort may occur. So, apart from the usual suspects calling for all-time highs in silver this year, and those being more modest claiming silver will be at least $40, let's take a brief look at what others perhaps with more credible credentials predict for the silver price, and who have been not necessarily spot on in the past, but have not been out by that significant an amount. Well, only a couple of days ago, in fact, on the 9th of February, investinghaven.com, and we'll quote them here, stated, We see a mildly bullish 2020 with a silver prediction of $22, but a wildly bullish 2021 with a prediction of $28. So wildly bullish $28 in two years' time. Goldman Sachs predicts $18 silver for 2020. Bank of America predicts $17.54. Bank of Montreal, $18.60. Commerzbank predicts $18.50. The long forecast predicts that silver may actually touch $22 an ounce this year, but will fall back, but should remain over $20. European precious metals firm De Gusa sees silver prices rallying to $23. And yes, you've guessed it. We've got to include this fellow. Keith Newmar, CEO, First Majestic Silver, sees silver rising to $130 an ounce. If he was a British investment advisor and he published that, he would be jailed under our law if that was official advice, investment advice he was giving his clients. Because his repeated forecasts to investors have been consistently wild of the mark. But let's be honest about it. If you were running a company whereby every dollar the silver price rose made you either a million or multiple millions of dollars, then perhaps you too would be praying and forecasting and trying to encourage silver to rise to $130 an ounce. In addition, the LBMA have recently published their forecast and calls for an average gold price of 1550 in 2020, as we pointed out in our gold 2020 forecast. And they've also predicted an average price of silver standing at 1821. Now, we know that most of these figures will certainly disappoint listeners, many of whom, like us, quite frankly, would like to see silver at $50 plus. Of course we would. We hold enough for a very nice payoff, thank you. But we have to ask, how come, when mining supplies appears to be diminishing and pretty close to peak production, though we will question that in some future videos, and demand it moderate, moderately at least robust, why is the silver price nowhere near its peak, unlike gold and palladium and a number of other precious metals? Well... For one thing, there is quite a surplus of above-ground silver currently, 
to more than cater for market demand. Also bear in mind that traditionally 55-60% to 60 of all silver demand is used for industrial production. And what do we hear and see in almost every daily newspaper or news headline? Yes, recession, or brink of recession, or lower GDP, or growth forecasts cut. It truly does not take a genius to work out that if the majority of silver demand is for industrial production and the world's economic growth is declining, that the demand for silver will also decline? Does that sound unreasonable? This then leads us on to the second main reason people buy silver. Well, apart from jewellery, they do so for monetary purposes. Well, at the moment, gold has that medal. That is the star. Central banks, governments and major financiers see gold as the key monetary metal, not silver. Silver normally comes into its own when gold becomes prohibitively expensive or what many may deem to have reached the top of the slope. And then in these late stages, attention tends to be directed towards silver. Or as common parlance describes it, poor man's gold. And that is when it does actually come into its own. And you hear these comments by some of the pumpers blow off top. Now you don't have to take our word for it. Ask yourself. Why has gold reached all-time highs in sterling and Australian dollars and a number of other countries' currencies, and yet silver hasn't? How come gold is only some 17% off its all-time high in US dollar terms, and yet silver needs to rise 181% to reach its all-time high in US dollar terms? And please do not tell us manipulation. One can make a good argument for gold and silver manipulation, but sorry, manipulating silver while leaving gold alone won't wash, sorry. We are more likely to believe it being the other way around. The gold to silver ratio is 90 to 1 for a very good reason. Gold is in greater demand as a monetary metal than silver is, and silver is losing demand for now as an industrial metal because of the economic climate. Or until the figures are actually reported, this is what investors believe is the case. OK, taking all of the financial data into account, including technical analysis, and trying as best we can to factor in potential black swans and erroneous geopolitical crises, we can see silver this year moving between a low of $15.25 and a high of $21, with silver, providing Trump wins the election, settling at the end of the year between 1825 and 1850. Now, if you were to ask us what happens if the US attacks Iran militarily, or the coronavirus kills hundreds of thousands of people and millions are infected, then of course these figures go out of the window. But frankly, looking at the geopolitical and economic landscape, even with some disasters, not necessarily all of them, and some wonderful economic news, we find it difficult to see silver falling below $15 or rising above 23 So that is our, if you like, extreme spread. But our normal prediction for silver by year end is 1825 to 1850 tops, and an average silver price for the year around $18. Now that's not a bad result in a year that could still provide a situation of reasonable economic activity. But we do believe for 2020 there are unlikely to be any of the real sharp moves in silver prices that the pumpers are predicting or hinting at. Now, 2021 may be a different kettle of fish, but we shall cover that year in a later video, later in the year. Thank you so much for listening. Do share your thoughts as to whether you agree or disagree with us. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, pressing the bell sign so you, that you are notified of videos as and when they are published. This video is being published in the Inner Sanctum 
today, 13th of February, and then approximately one week from today will be published to all of our listeners and viewers. Thank you once again. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.